St. Paul says, mourn those you love who have died, but not as the pagans do. I was talking to a good priest friend of mine recently, and he said, you know, it's okay to mourn, but to do so in a way where we despair, where it's all consuming, that's just like anyone who's a non-believer, anyone who doesn't have eternal hope. You know, but on the flip side, we could say, well, who cares what's going on? That's, first of all, not realistic. It just means we're putting our head in, this, in the sand because if you, rea- if you realize the gravity of international politics and war, not that we have to be super in-depth with it, but if you realize the gravity of that, you realize how many people's lives are impacted, you should care for others. You should care for their souls. And you should care for their lives their families, the brokenness that comes from that, the suffering. It's a Christian perspective to care for those who are suffering. There's a ton of suffering that comes from war. And so charity, this interior life, is not uh, an excuse to not care about others or to think, well, I'm just in my little bubble and I'm just going to have this very, you know, tight way of looking at the world and just act as if nothing else is happening. You know, St. Teresa of Avila, when she founded her Uh, foundations with the Carmelites, she told the sisters, you did not come here for yourself. If you came here just for yourself, then you should leave. That's not why we're here. We're here to pray for the salvation of others. That's why we're here. That's why you've come to disconnect from the world for for that aim. That should be in our intentions and our aim for living. And so when we have true charity, yes, we do have focus on spiritual things, but we, it's, it's in the world but not of it in the sense that it's taking these things that are temporal and sort of supernaturalizing them, transforming them, you know, letting that be taken up from a Trinitarian point of view, right? So what would be a, a spiritual perspective on all of this? Well, the healthy approach would be to care for others, but to allow this to foster in us greater hope. Because if we have true eternal hope, we can recognize that this is the valley of tears and there is suffering. And that tugs on our heart, suffering of our own and suffering of others. We should have great compassion. But at the same time, we have strong enough hope that that isn't going to weigh on us so much that we have all this angst that we are obsessive about it because we know that this life is, is short. We're going to die sooner or later anyway, ourselves and others. And we want everyone to be prepared for eternity. That's the greatest tragedy is when someone loses their eternal salvation, when their soul is lost, right? So um, you might wonder, well, how is that spiritual per se? Well, because in our spiritual life, it isn't just, well, I talk to God and that's it. It's in that time of talking to God, in that time of being with God, I, I, I should be growing my spiritual organism. And one of the key components of that is the supernatural virtue of hope. And it, if you want a little tool to help you with that, memorize the act of hope. Uh, one version of it is, O oh Lord God, I hope by your grace for the pardon of all my sins and afterlife here to gain eternal happiness because you have promised it. Who are infinitely powerful, faithful, kind, and merciful. In this hope, I intend to live and die. Amen. It's a beautiful prayer. You know, it can help when you're struggling with scrupulosity, but also when you're just facing, you know, the sense of your mortality right now, or you just have a sense of that and that angst might be coming on or that angst for others. Maybe there's people you know and love that are affected, that are affected by this war or that may be dying soon. But either way, it's, that's a critical time to make that act of hope. Even if you don't see the practical step here and there, that's part of the darkness of faith is you, you really can grow in those times of purification where you feel that weight in this life. Mm-hmm.